I had other stuff I was going to do today, and this video won't go live on the day that this was released, but I just got notification that an important update that I have been requesting is now available on the Elgato Stream Deck. This is going to be pretty cool, so install the update from the updater, as always. Accept the UAC prompt, let it do its thing. Of course, <laughs> it's not going to let me do it with OBS, so I'll be right back. All right, now we have some more control with the hotkeys. There's also some new Twitch actions, so if I go down here, you have things like clear chat. Uh, there was a moderator one. There was a few others. You can see the change notes that was shown at the start of the video. The cool thing here is the hotkey command for system. Now you have, wow, now you have this big old drop down menu where you can choose keys that aren't even on your keyboard. So for those of us using super macro stuff, you can now go past F12 all the way to F24 because yes, the default key or the original keyboard layout, like on the IBM Model M that had all of the function keys goes from F1 to F24. So now you can assign those, which allows you to route things through auto hotkey easier. You can manually input mo uh, modifier keys. You can choose numpad buttons. You can choose uh, system buttons. So launching mail apps, media apps, or hitting you know, next, play, pause, stop, things like that. Volume control and modifier only hotkey. So I can hit shift. Well, that's if you just want to send the modifier. If you want to send all of these extra ones, you can do that. But that is, that's why it says modifier only. That's only if you hit it. Otherwise, you need to type it in here. And that's fine. You can even tell it to differentiate between the left and right modifiers. So for example, most keyboards have control, alt, and shift on both the left and right side. Now you can tell it that left shift is different than right shift for specific macros if you have a way to interact with a program that utilizes that. Okay, so my big complaint here is that to a newcomer who isn't watching this, I guess, you won't entirely know how to use these other keys because they are, like if you hit it, it goes there and then when you go to type something else, you can't combine keys. And so I would love a more like virtual keyboard layout where you can just activate it and it holds it there. But what you do if you are using your modifier keys on your keyboard, for example, if I hold shift, if I hold shift and then click, it now adds left shift to all these things. You still need to hold it, because if I let go, it's there. But if this menu is up, you hold the modifier that you want to use, and then you can choose any key combination. So left control, left ship, 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 is this a boat? Shift, F13. That's now what that command is. So pretty neat. This is super useful for macros and stuff. I will actually pull up real quick. This is what I normally use to create macros. This is the Genovation uh, Macro Master software, which is used for my main keyboard, which has a bunch of built-in macro keys on it. The problem is you have to go through manually manage files, and then you have to slowly add all of these and save it, download it to the keyboard and dump it back. But this has that additional layer of control over your keyboard. So for example, uh, let me go to a button that doesn't have anything yet. This one. That does have something for some reason, probably just a test. But if I want to make it, I have this entire virtual keyboard here. So I can say Control, Shift, F17, and then you can type other ones as well, like F, T, G, Unshift, Uncontrol. All of that command is sent, which is pretty cool. And they have, like, I mean, you can send lines and lines and lines of keyboard shortcuts, and there's two different levels to it. So you can hold a modifier key, which for me is this top left one, and it switches between two different layers of macros. I really appreciate the design and layout of this virtual keyboard setup, but it's a pain in the butt to overall get macros set up on the keypad. So using the Elgato Stream Deck, where it's very on the fly, it's as you go, is really cool, as long as you learn what you're doing there, which is... Fairly simple. So that is the big update that I am excited for. Just a quick little bonus video for this week. Thank you for watching. Update your Stream Deck software if you'd like it. And otherwise, if you're interested in more content about the Stream Deck, I'll have a playlist with my review and other tutorials and things like that linked in the description below. And I'll see you later.